Tantinescu, President Tantinescu, Excellences, distinguished participants, it is indeed a great honor to address this conference on cultural diplomacy in the Levant. And let me start by saying that, of course, uh, the diplomacy that we all are very much familiar with, the standard, so called standard diplomacy, is a diplomacy that deals with sovereign states, roughly 200 of them. But there are even more important numbers in our world. Number one is seven billion of us, the number that keeps changing, going up, presumably it will go up to about nine billion, and then will drop to maybe three billions. And we refer, when we speak about all of the people, to a subject of public diplomacy. And then there is another important number, the number that uh, is crucial for the development, and this is the cultural differences. And there are roughly 3,000 different cultures in the world, and we speak about the cultural diplomacy. So the cultural diplomacy, and there are several definitions from the Fletcher School of Diplomacy, just like the Satov's definition of diplomacy, dealing with what they precisely are. But basically, what one wants is to use the feeling of different cultures in not only communicating to them, but also getting the response, getting the interaction, getting the inputs from these different cultures in molding the current world. Because as important as the biological diversity is, so is the cultural diversity. Indeed, there is even a concept just like we have intelligence quotient and uh, emotional quotient, so we have a cultural quotient which actually measures how quickly we are using our cultural background in interacting with other cultures and creating a global world and possibly trying to solve the problems. Now, all of this is interconnected with another important subject, and that's the subject of education and the backbones of education at least at the higher education level, are universities that have a triple functions. Function number one is, of course, education. Function number two is producing, is doing and producing results, scientific results. And the third one is to maintain and develop the culture. Now let us turn to the subject of this conference, Levant. Levant is the area between Anatolia and Egypt which is indeed, as pointed out by President Constantinescu and many other in the uh, opening material, is a cradle of many civilizations, is also the cradle of three of the important Abrahamic religions, is a place uh, of uh, really currently vibrant activities. Then there is a concept of the Middle East, which includes, of course, Turkey and Egypt, all the way to Iran, and then finally, let me introduce the concept of the Mediterranean, which is a much broader concept, including all of the Mediterranean. And now, of course, European Union, following the suggestion of President Sarkozy, has actually introduced the concept which still is not quite uh, developed, the so-called Union for the Mediterranean, which includes 43 countries, among them all of the European Union countries. Now, Levant, Middle East, with all of the positive things, is also the area which at the moment is one plagued with enormous problems. All of the problems that are in the world, economic, social, ecological, and so on, are compounded there by conflicts, are compounded there by the possibility of starting even a more general global war. And unfortunately, the things have developed from bad to worse. Back over there, uh, just at the time of the Second World War, it was the, the proposal of the so-called Peel Commission, which came up with the ideas of the two states, which never materialized properly. Then, as a matter of fact, there are even two Nobel Prizes for peace being given to the peacemaker of this area, but nothing actually happened. There was a recent event, attempt actually, uh, that all of us were enthusiastic about the Arab Spring, but it turned out that Spring did not have quite the same meaning in connotation with the Arab Spring and the Spring that we like to see in general in nature. 
And then, of course, now we have the problem in one of the important countries, the country that I believe has one of the oldest cities in the world, Damascus, namely Syria. So yes, there are serious problems that we have. On top of the problems that are there, let me now try to go into very, very detailed ideas, the idea here is of the conference, try to have some solutions. Now, the problem of the Middle East is that they have weapons of mass destruction, particularly they have nuclear weapons. Israel is in the stage of so-called opaque, not quite open, but we all know that they have something between 100 and 400 nuclear weapons. And then there is the Pakistani bomb, sometimes referred as the Islamic bomb, or more specifically, the Sunni bomb. When you have the Sunni bomb, it's obviously very close to say that you need also the Shiite bomb. So the question now is whether there will be another country that will develop nuclear weapons there. And of course, there are already evidence that in Syria currently another of the triad of weapons of mass destruction, namely the chemical weapons, have been used. So what do we do? Of course, the idea was to use the old-fashioned philosophy. Let's try to have a conference, the conference in Helsinki. This sounds very well. There, were, there is a facilitator named by the big power, Ambassador Yakalaev Layava, who was actually to get the meeting organized in uh, Helsinki in order to establish the so-called nuclear weapon free zone in the Middle East. Then, of course, they realized it's not good only to speak about nuclear, so they decided to call it weapons of mass destruction free zone. That conference, which was supposed to take uh, place about uh, more than half a year ago, still is not happening. There is a big uh, frustration. Nobody knows what to do. So let me propose what to do. Uh, we had, of course, an awful lot of experience in Europe. We had 100 years war, 30 years war, 6 years war, whatever you want. I mean, we are experts for war. We did nothing else throughout our history but making wars. But then there were great people like Altiero Spinelli, like uh, Jean Monod, who actually came up with the idea in the middle of the Second World War, let us have a union, a union which was the union of development and peace. Okay? So let's try to do something like that over there in the Middle East. But Middle East, of course, is not quite good because when you look at the geography, the balance and so on, you see that something more should be done. So I propose that we should be looking for the Mediterranean, namely including countries like Spain, like France, like Italy, like Turkey, like Egypt, like Iran, and of course, Israel and Palestine and so on. So that would be the thing. It has to be done quickly, and where should be the emphasis? Spinelli, in his Ventotene document, actually emphasized, and of course it was done later on, as we know, it was the coal and steel. Now we need something else. What is the most important thing? Let's go again to the idea of the Europe. This year, European Commission declared this year to be the year of the citizen. The World Academy has decided that the way to approach the problems we have is to emphasize on the human capital being the most important, the richest one. And just when we were saying about that, the, the group from Cambridge, University of Cambridge, also in association with the uh, Australian universities, came up with the evidence that among all of the capitals, by far the greatest is the human capital. When you look, for instance, the total amount of this so-called manufacture capital, which is of the order of uh, 40, 50 trillion euros, and when you compare the human capital, you come up with the 10 times figure, about 600 trillion. So yes, this is what we have to do, and the human capital is the dignity of human being, the security of human being, the freedom and peace, and of course there, let me come to my narrow parochial position of being a scientist. There are successes. There are successes in the Middle East. Following the model of CERN, there is a project called SESAMI, where this ME at the end stands for the Middle East. This is the project where Israel and Palestine are together, where Iran and Pakistan and Egypt are together, and to add it all, the United States and the Russian Federation are observers. The models based on science seems to be among the best.
and let's never forget it is deep in the human interest as Aristotle said all of us by our nature have a desire to know it is our desire to understand everything and let's based on that try to build a safer culturally diverse world and leave it for the future. Thank you very much.